Hello and happy Women's History Month. My name is Sandy Lowe and I am the current NAWA president as well as an actuary manager at Liberty Mutual. This month, NAWA is partnering with the CAS to host a couple of fireside chats with women leaders in the CAS. And today I'm excited to be speaking with Megan Goldfarb on the topic of work-life balance. Uh, Megan is an extroverted actuary and technology leader with a passion for solving impossible problems with data and technology. In her current role, she's responsible for the technologies that power State Farm's PNC data pipelines and predictive models for rate making and underwriting. She received her BS in Applied Mathematics from Millican University, MBA from Indiana University, and an MS in Business Analytics from Indiana University. She's a fellow of the CAS, holds her AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty, and is a spe Certified Specialist in Predictive Analytics. A math major by coincidence, she uses her personal story to inspire others and is very passionate about increasing the number of women and other underrepresented populations in STEM careers. And she actively volunteers to make the path easier for others. She serves as the executive advisor for State Farm's Women in Technology ERG and as the co-chair of the CAS SOA Joint Committee on Inclusion, Equity, and Diversity, also called the JC. Megan and her husband, Jason, have three busy children. She enjoys listening to audiobooks, sewing, singing, and gar gardening. Um, so I'd love to welcome Megan. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled to talk about work-life balance. Awesome. So to begin, can you share how you define work-life balance and why it's important to you as a woman in the actuarial or technology profession? Thank you so much. Um, so for me personally, for uh, I think it's very, very important for women in actuarial and technology for us to truly be our best selves at work and bring our full selves to the table. We have to make sure that we have the right balance and we're taking care of ourselves. I rather than thinking of it like a balancing act, I really like to think of it as something called work life integration. Um, and as I'm, you know, in any job, that balance is going to be slightly different depending on what the expectations are of the role, how much travel there is, and really what phase in that role you're in. Uh, but I tend to focus on a few key questions as I'm, as I'm really thinking about that work-life integration. The first is, can I be there for my family when I need to be? whether it's at a really important kids event or whether it's for, you know, a, a medical emergency for a parent, you know, can I be there when I need to be? The second is, am I able to find the time to make sure I can bring my best self to my family and to my work? So I pay attention to those little things. Am I getting frustrated when I'm at a, you know, at a kid's event because I'm trying to work email while I'm paying attention to my kids? Or, you know, am I able to find that downtime so I can really think and innovate um, and get that time to disconnect? And then do I love what I do? You know, when I'm truly engaged, I'm truly in a role that I absolutely love what I do. I find myself working at night and that's okay as long as everything else is in balance and as long as it's something that I'm doing because I, I'm passionate about it and I want to do it. And then um, on average is the answer yes to those top three questions. Is, is it something that is temporary or is it something that's permanent? Um, and so if it is something that's permanent, then how do I get back to where I need to be? Are there any long-term changes I need to think about of whether it's looking for a different assignment or reprioritizing some work or, you know, just balancing some, some stuff with my husband from a family perspective? So those are kind of some tips and um, how I think about work-life balance. It's not really about, you know, having that perfect balance all the time. We don't have nine to five jobs, right? It's about... How do you strike that balance over time and make those choices uh, on a daily basis so that we can all bring our best selves to work, but also have energy and passion for to be able to bring our best selves to our, our passions or our, our family? I love that. And I do feel like 
you know, work does ebb and flow a lot. Sometimes they're busier than others. So I really do like that question of like, is this temporary? And, you know, trying to understand if it's not, what changes need to happen or in general, how am I feeling about that? So I think that's awesome. Um, I'd love to hear about some strategies that you found effective for maintaining that healthy work-life balance or integration as you like to call it, which I think is awesome. Uh, especially in a demanding career like actuarial science, do you mind sharing some of those with us? Oh, absolutely. And I, I will start by saying I have not always been great at striking the right balance. <laughs> um, I remember so incredibly clearly, uh, I had two exams left when we had our first child. And I was in a, kind of a stretch assignment where I had taken on some management responsibilities. And so I was working crazy hours. I also knew these two exams were really important. And I was trying to learn how to be a parent, right? Which was a really, really challenging time. Um, I remember missing so many moments of our oldest child, Ari's first year. I would spend all day Saturday and Sunday at a coffee shop week after week. And my husband would come in and bring Ari, you know, for maybe an hour or two during nap or to just play with him for, you know, 20 minutes in between practice exams, just so mm -hmm. that I kind of had a little bit of balance in there and I didn't feel like I was missing as much. Uh, but at the same time, as hard as it was, I knew I needed to get through those two exams so that I could focus on kind of the life after exams. Um, and I knew I could enjoy being a mom so much more after that. So I kind of had that light at the end of the tunnel to really get me through. Um, but since then, uh, it was, you know, I think it's that moment where you have to check yourself and say, just because I spent all that time and kind of got used to that type of level of effort, right, both inside and out of work, doesn't mean that that has to be the reality post exams, right? And so since then, my philosophy definitely changed over time. Um, really trying to think hard about, am I able to be there for my family? So a few things that have worked for me um, in that post-exam world, as I've taken on different responsibilities over the last, oh goodness, 10, 11 years, um, one tip would be blocking off time on my calendar for, for drop-off or pickup or, or key events, whether it's a field trip for a child or a vacation knowing that I might not be able to go to all of it, but at least I have a greater chance of making a good chunk of that if I block that time off as out of office early on. Um, also having a higher threshold for work travel. Um, in this virtual world, there's a lot that can be accomplished online without travel. And so I really try to ask good questions about is this something that really needs to be done in person or is it something that can be accomplished virtually and making sure that I'm maximizing those trips away uh, because, you know, that does kind of disrupt your, your norm. And there are definitely things I miss at times because of work travel and there's things you're going to miss at times that are important. Um, but making sure that that's a meaningful time and it's a reason you ne truly need to be away is, is a good balance. The other, uh, other thing I think about is um, the realization that when I truly am off balance from a work-life integration perspective, I'm not bringing my best self to work. So in all of our jobs, we have to bring creative thinking. We have to be able to have that time to have our brain rest. And so whether that's gardening at home in the evening or listening to an audiobook or sewing or spending time with the kids, having some of that time at night to decompress is really, really important in order to bring our best selves to work and to have our, our, our best brain power on the problems we're trying to solve. It took me a while to realize that. And so I hope I can save you all a little bit of time by maybe learning that lesson a little bit earlier. Uh, but for me, it did take a while for me to, to realize that getting in, you know, having that right work-life integration actually helps me be more effective. Um, and then finally, letting some things go. 
Um, the best analogy I think of here is a juggler with different balls in the air. So you're juggling different balls. Some of those balls are glass. Some of them are bouncy balls. And some of them might not even matter at all, right? And so how do you figure out which are the balls that are bouncy balls that you can just like let drop and then pick back up when they bounce back? Which are glass? And maybe which of those balls, you know, you can pass off to someone else to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a really helpful analogy to me so that I can try to refocus uh, my time on what is the most important at work and at home. I love that. I've heard the expression, like, don't be afraid to drop the ball before, but I think that visual of the glass balls, the bouncy balls, the ones that someone else can help with, I think is a really awesome spin and takes that to the next level. So, oh, and as women, we yeah. don't want to drop a ball, right? right. We want to right. get the 99% or the hundred percent. And it's really hard to pass that ball off or to be like, it's okay that that one's dropping. I will get it later. And that's, a hard, a hard habit to break for sure. Yeah. hundred um, percent. So how do you prioritize your personal well-being and non-work commitments alongside your professional responsibilities? Because you definitely have a lot on your plate as I kind of read through earlier. Um, would love to kind of hear how you strategize and prioritize there. Oh, that, that's a great question. I would say I really take a step back and family and faith always comes first, right? Um, and, and, you know, it, things like, you know, being there for the high holy days or, um, being there for certain events for our kids and, or for my husband is really, really important to me. So making sure that, um, I know that, but I've also communicated that with others is, is helpful. Um, not being afraid to outsource, uh, when it comes to whether it's asking my husband to take on something because I just can't, even if it won't be done the way I want it to be done, right? Um, <laughs> trusting that, um, as well as, you know, whether it's, you know, hiring a babysitter or things like that, being comfortable uh, with that. And then really looking at that long-term average. So, you know, there will be weeks or months that I might not get a chance to read a book, right? Or that my fun activity is sewing 36 vests for the Seussical musical that my son is in, right? You know, there are going to be times where you find that personal, um, that, that personal well-being through some other activities because it's just really busy, uh, whether at work or at home. Um, but that's okay as long as the long-term average is that I get to be able to be there for both. Uh, so it's okay to be off balance as long as over time it is um, you're meeting all of those needs. That makes a lot of sense. I love the Seussical reference, by the way. I grew up doing musical, so um, and now I've got like those songs going on in the back of my head, <laughs> which I think is really fun. Yeah, um, you, you have songs in your head. I have fur from the vests all over my office. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Um, so. I think you mentioned a little bit about this, like the importance of communicating with those around you. Um, so how do you communicate your boundaries and needs for work-life balance to your colleagues, supervisors, um, any, your partner, whomever? Yeah, that's a really great question. And, you know, I think early in my career, I was almost afraid to communicate some of that. And it was more about me and not about them, Right. Uh, because every time I've been clear on, hey, I really, I can't go to this meeting because, you know, that's a field trip that I really want to attend and I had planned PTO. Um, nobody's ever questioned that. They've been like, oh, great, have fun. It'll be a great, you know, we've got to covered, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, a, a family member has surgery or something like that. I've never had a situation where I didn't feel respected and supported uh, for prioritizing uh, the things that matter. Um, at the same time, recognizing it that it's an ebb and flow because there are absolutely times where work is going to take priority because of business realities. And there's going to be times where there's a lot of extra hours being spent at work. Um, but 
with that ebb and flow and that clear communication, um, it helps you not take on more than you can handle. Um, and it's okay to share because, you know, it, it, it all, and sometimes it also requires a little extra context. Um, I, my, our family's Jewish and I always take off for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur because we don't work on those days, right? We're at synagogue and, um, you know, the first couple of times I tried to take off, I didn't say what it was for, you know what I mean? And I didn't provide that context and I still took off, but people didn't really understand why I wasn't checking email or what, you know, it, it, because they didn't know. And so taking that step back and providing that context of saying, Hey, I'm going to be off on this day because it's Rosh Hashanah, which is one of, which is one of our two most important holidays. And that means that I'm not going to be checking email and here's my backup and everything's covered ahead of time. Those types of communications, while sometimes it's a little scary to put out there and to say, put it into words of why you're taking off or whether you can check email or not, it helps people understand how to respect those boundaries, right? And how to support you. And I have never found any situation that when I put that out there, somebody didn't say, oh, thank you for sharing. And um, either good luck on the field trip or hope you have a great holiday. So I just encourage us to get past that personal boundary that we put in there on ourselves of being afraid to share. I definitely think that makes a lot of sense. And as a leader, I'm sure that those around you and on your teams also really appreciate that context. And it almost gives them a little bit more permission to do the same, to feel comfortable doing the same and taking and setting, you know, the boundaries that they need for themselves also. So by doing so, you're helping yourself, but also setting like a great example for others. Um, in your experience, how does work-life balance contribute to job satisfaction, productivity, and overall career success? That is a great question. So I know I kind of alluded to this in the past with exams, but I'll start by just saying there is a level of kind of commitment and obsession needed to pass actuarial exams, especially the upper level ones, um, that truly tests each and every one of us, right? It is a grueling process, but it's one that you learn a tremendous about your, amount about yourself and, and the job that, that we are going into. Um, but it's very easy at the end of that to let that set the pattern for treating work the same way after exams. And so for us to bring our best mind to work each day, we really have to find time to turn our brains off. And so my best ideas might come to me on an evening walk, for example, uh, and so or a personal coding project that I'm working on. And so we really need to get away from that idea that the number of hours we work in a day or a week equals success, because what really equals success is the outcomes we are trying to drive towards and the ideas and innovation that we bring to the table for ourselves or the people that we are leading if you're in a leadership role. Um, and there's a lot healthier way for us to get those outcomes than working 70 plus hours a week. Um, knowing that there are there are some times that that have higher workloads. And so um, kind of going back to that question of how does work-life balance contribute to job satisfaction, productivity, and overall career success? I think it's critical. As long as it's defined as an ebb and a flow and an overall, how do we each bring our best selves to work? Um, it definitely increases our productivity, our happiness at work, and to the people that we lead for the people that we lead if you are in a leadership role. And so it's really, really important to strike that balance over time. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like for myself, I've had those moments of random like work thought pop into my head outside of work, but I feel like I think you've alluded to this a lot. It takes the recharge to be able to get there sometimes. If you're spinning on a question or problem for so long, sometimes you need to step away to be able to see more clearly um, what needs to be done. So I think that definitely resonates with me too. Um, I've got one more question for you. 
What advice would you give to other women who are striving to achieve better work-life balance or integration? I would say be the trendsetter. Have the courage to ask for what you need to be successful and to change it for the future for others. Um, you'll be surprised how much support you will get, gain if you just share what you need. Um, and even if you don't get it that first time, you know how do you make it better for the others that are coming will be um, coming up in this career after you? So just be that trendsetter and have the courage to ask for what you need to achieve that work-life balance. That's awesome. And you're right. Even if you don't get it the first time, part of the trend that you're setting could be, hey, a lot of other women we've noticed have asked for this with you being one of the early ones. Like maybe we should start considering this more. Um, so absolutely important. Megan, this has been such a great conversation. I know I've taken away some really good things. I really appreciate you spending the time to share with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and um, appreciate the time. Yeah, absolutely. And for those interested, learning more to learn more about our mission at the Network of Actuarial Women and Allies, please visit us at our website, nawaactuaries.org. Um, thank you again to Megan and happy Women's History Month.